Hasn't this month felt like the longest year ever? Hi everyone, Nurse Mel here. Hope you're having a great day. It's actually the first time that I speak to all of you in 2020, so Happy New Year. Hoping that you bring in this new year with lots of health and love because those are the two biggest factors that drive humanity and our purpose here. I am going to address the elephant in the room. I haven't posted in the last month and I've been getting a lot of messages on Instagram on my Nurse Mel um, Instagram account and the little niche I formed with many nurses regarding if I've stopped YouTube, if I'm going to continue because there's so many topics that many of you want me to continue addressing. So I just wanted to be straight up and tell you what's been up in January of 2020. So to start things off, the first two weeks of January were literally insane. That's actually an understatement for what it was. I was working about 70 plus hours a week at my job at the hospital. That is my priority. My, my nursing job comes first before anything else. But it was just insane the amount of hours I was dedicating myself to. We were short staffed, people were really sick. Um, so we just had to pick up the slack and use our teamwork and pick up the unit as best as we possibly could, which meant that a lot of nurses were doing overtime. I was doing nights, evenings, and days on rotation. I'd probably just go home, sleep for a couple hours, and go back to work for another following shift. So all I basically did for the first two weeks of January was work, eat, and sleep. That's it. So on top of that, I also started university, my Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. I'm actually doing it with University of Athabasca, which is online, it's University in Alberta. And I may have, I hate to say this, but I may have underestimated the difficulty of the program. Wow, it's heavy. Like there's just a lot to get done. I also had a work trip in the midst of everything. And on top of all of this, last week I got really, really sick. What ended up happening was I was ignoring the signs and symptoms that my body was giving me. Because of that, I actually ended up in the hospital for a day. I was completely depleted. My blood pressure was very low. Anything that I would eat wouldn't stay in. Everything was just coming out. I was completely drained of energy. The doctor and I were probably suspecting if it was C. diff, which I was praying to God I wouldn't because then God knows how long I'd have to be on antibiotics for. But it is possible because as a nurse, you are prone to getting all of these infections and these things because we work with patients that have um, these um, illnesses and they bring them forth in the hospital. So we were considering if it was C. diff, if it was NORAC, if it was one of these gastro type of viruses, one of these nasty bugs that I could have probably gotten on the unit I work on. So I am still um, waiting for results. Needless to say, this is just a little cautionary tale that I want to tell my fellow nurses and actually just anyone in general that we need to be paying attention to the signs of our body. Do not let it get to the point that I made it get to. If you realize there's little signs and symptoms that you should be picking up on, attend to them, go get the help you need, seek uh, health aid. It is there for a reason. As healthcare professionals, we are taking care of people who are very, very sick. So before you choose to take care of other people, you need to be taking care of yourself prior. Otherwise, you won't be able to take care of anyone else. On another note, 2020 has had a very difficult start. As the world may know, the world was shook by the news that has happened with Kobe Bryant and the nine passengers on the helicopter flight. It just comes to show us how life is so precious and you could be going on with your day and just not be coming back home to the people that you love the most. So take something from this, spend less time arguing with one another and fighting with other people, but just accepting everyone else and loving everyone equally as we should be. One day, the greatest person and the greatest thing can be easily taken away from you. So just keep the ones you love very close and dear to you all the time. A lot can happen in 31 days, but life goes on and you need to be strong and you need to trust the process and continue moving forward the best of your ability. With all of this being said, I thought it'd be appropriate to dedicate this end of the segment to loss and grief. It is something as a nurse that we are trained, uh, trained in. We learn about it in school. We deal with it in our everyday life as nurses, especially me. I work in an oncology unit with my colleagues. We deal with loss weekly it's something very difficult to absorb and process and it makes you question a lot of things 
However, there is a grieving process and I'd love to share that with all of you because I think that'd be a, re a very good tool for all of us to have because in any shape or, f uh, shape or form, we will be going through loss and grief at a point in our life. It's inevitable. It's the way the world works, the way that God made us, if you believe in that. And so this is just a little process that we've created in hopes to help you better understand the grieving process being in channel with your emotions and what you're going through and knowing that you're not alone going through this. Loss is the act of being without something or someone. It's typically something that you usually have and something that is very dear to you. Loss can be in terms of many different things. It can be in terms of death. It could be in terms of losing a capability to do something, um, losing mobility, um, a health deficit, loss of a limb. It can also be in terms of a separation of a divorce and losing uh, someone in a relationship. It could also be in terms of an abortion, a miscarriage, mother and their child. It could also be postpartum where they feel the loss of having a baby in their stomach. Loss comes in many different shapes and forms and it's good for you to understand the type of loss that you are dealing with. However, the grieving process is actually adaptable to all of these different situations. So we'll apply the situation in terms of someone losing someone that they love um, in terms of death. So the first step in this is shock and denial. This is where you will be in disbelief, in complete, utter surprise that this thing could have happened to you. You feel numb, you're very confused, you don't understand if this is reality, if this is a dream, you're in a very hazy mindset. You just can't understand how something this horrif uh, this, how something this horrific could have happened to you. Step two is anger. It is where you are in complete frustration and you're just angry with the world and you're upset and you feel like something is against you in the universe and you begin to question all of your beliefs. And if you have a faith, you begin to question it. If you believe in God, you believe, uh, you begin to question God and you begin to question your values and the way you are as a person. You begin to feel as if you are inferior to the world and the world is against you. You feel like everyone is enclosing on you because they took this person away from you and you are to live it out every day without them. Step three is depression and detachment. Basically what's happening in this step is that the reality of the situation has just set in and you begin to feel this emptiness and loneliness within yourself because you've lost this person that you love so much. You feel completely helpless as if nothing will ever repair the pain that you are feeling and nothing will ever help you feel ful uh, fulfilled again and nothing will ever make you feel whole again. Begin to detach yourself from others around you because you feel like any person that you begin to attach yourself to can also be taken away from you the way the person that you love has been. Step four is dialogue and bargaining. This is where you begin to realize that you need to reach out with other people to help you cope with what is going on internally and what has happened externally to your world. The change that has happened in your life and begin to bargain and question and think how am I going to go on with my journey and my path without this person being in it. So it's just a lot of bargaining, a lot of questioning, a lot of open questions um, to others and to yourself. So this, this is a lot of internalization and just trying to understand and make sense of the situation. Step five is acceptance and moving forward. This is where you begin to weigh out the options and the plan that you have ahead for yourself. This is where you've accepted the loss. You'll never forget the person. You're going to keep them very dear to your heart. But now it's like, okay, how am I going to move on with myself and create this path of a new life and a new chapter without this person in the real world without me? You need to be the one to secure yourself because you're no longer depending on your other half. You're no longer depending on your person. You are depending on yourself for this relocation and this, this safety magnet that you're going to build within yourself. So this is where you're going to become a stronger, more empowered person because of what you um, dealt have been dealt in life. So when they say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, this is actually the step that defines that model, that phrase. Loss and grief is very subjective, but at, what, at some point in your life, you will go through something traumatic that will change you for the rest of your life. So it is important to have a good, solid foundation in the person that you are and have a good, solid foundation in the people that you love and your entourage and the people that truly make you happy and are going to be your backbone when you can't even get yourself up in the morning.
So it's just important that you have this and you seek for that and you create this solid foundation in your life. I wish you all lots of love, health, and happiness. I look forward to making more videos for you. Be sure to subscribe down below to my YouTube channel, Nurse Smell, and follow me on Instagram, Nurse Smell, to keep up to date with all of the new information I'll be putting out for you. I'd love to cover some new topics that have come forward in 2020, aka coronavirus. It doesn't come from beer, but I'd love to cover new and interesting topics like this for all of you. So be sure to send me an email, send me some messages like you have been, and I'd love to help you all out. Spreading love, health, and awareness to everyone. Thank you everyone and have a great day.